Hello Saberland, welcome back to the Vinium Customs. Today we are going to be going over the install for this creepy uncle. It is by far one of my favorite chassis systems. It's engineered brilliantly. We've got our battery and our speaking compartment down here with our pogo pin connectors. Up top we have the rest of our stuff. We have our crystal focus or profi board. We have our OLED screen and we've got our Stoke connector here that lights up. It is a beautiful build and really it is going to be difficult to top a build like this. Now I do want to note that this tutorial is not going to go over how to install a lightsaber. The tutorial assumes you have a general understanding of soldering, wire routing, how to wire your soundboard, your accent LEDs, your OLED, stuff like that. We are just covering and teaching you how to install this specific chassis with the skills that you learn from other videos done by the Custom Saber Shop, Genesis Custom Sabers, so on and so forth. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell button to get notifications for our upcoming videos. Do or do not. There is no try. So here we're prepping our switch box. We're going to uh, bend the prongs gently, trim and bend, and insert them just to check the fit. Same with the switches. We want to make sure that our parts are fitting without any interference. Sometimes there will be printing residue in the form of a powder left over in these prints. So we want to make sure our components fit before we wire them. There is room up here to wire in your resistor, but there is also the potential to wire an SMD resistor on the soundboard if you're using a crystal focus. So here I'm prepping my switches. You'll notice I'm holding them in my helping hands at a distance approximately equal to the distance living in the control box. This is because we're going to solder these leads together and uh, join them as one ground. Here you'll see I have them joined with a resistor leg. The leg is solid, whereas wire is flexible, so it really depends on how confident you are in your spacing. Here we go, we have our switches all wired up. You just want to check that your leads are strong and then insert them into the box and route the wires through the middle. Now if you've chosen to use a resistor leg to bridge your grounds, you can solder the wire anywhere onto that leg. If you're wiring them with a wire, then you just need to solder a second wire onto one of the legs and connect them that way. Now remember, the wires go through the middle, not either side. At this point, our standard procedure is going to be testing all our leads. We're going to check our continuity in our switches, and we're going to check whether or not our LEDs work. I now have this hooked up to my benchtop power supply. We're driving 3.3 volts at 18 milliamps. I'm going to turn on the output and the green LED should light up. So this is why it's important to test your wires before you assemble everything. It turns out I wired my red LED backwards. The positive is on the negative and vice versa. So since we checked that, I know that and I can fix this instead of tearing apart the entire build and wondering why my red LED isn't lighting up. All right, we have our red LED connected and you'll notice we have the box assembled and in a vise all clamped together to simulate the conditions it'll be in the hilt to make sure our screws or anything aren't shorting it. The switches are very easy to test. I just have my leads hooked up to my multimeter. I know the bottom switch is my auxiliary, so when I click it, I should hear a beep. That's how I know my switch is working. And we do the same thing with the main switch. Perfect, everything's working in the control box. No way, put your weapon! I mean you no harm! All right, so now that we've got the control box handled, we're going to be installing from the bottom up, starting with the speaker. So the first thing we're going to do is check the fit of our speaker. I'm using a 28 millimeter KR Sabres base speaker. This is the Blackout Edition. Uh, these are the ones that I, I personally recommend for builds. Uh, they're reliable and they sound amazing. Uh, it should be a little bit of a loose fit. Uh, generally, the snugger the fit, the better, but we don't want to be expanding this section here because the next thing we're going to check is if it fits in the pommel. It should be a very snug fit there. Perfect. So we want this to come out and we unscrew the pommel. So the snugger the fit, the better. We want to be able to get it off as well without damaging anything. So that's a perfect fit there. We're not gonna to have to sand this down at all. And uh, we know that because the speaker is a loose fit in here, it's not going to cause issues with the pommel fitment. So here I have the speaker wired, and the wires are routed through the channel below the battery. What we want to do now is apply a little bit of E6000 to the edges of the speaker, press it in place, and we're going to sit it on the speaker and leave it to glue. Uh, the E6000 has a cure time of 72 hours, but a set time of approximately 30 minutes, so after half an hour you'll be good to handle this, just don't be prying on the speaker. So we have our glue applied on the edges here, and uh, we're actually going to leave this glue on the edge, because once it's dried, we'll be able to peel it off in one strip. So you're going to press it firmly, and we're just going to set this to the side for a bit. All right, now that our speaker is adhered in place, we're going to do our battery contacts. This one needs to be trimmed to the bottom. Here's will come with a little egg. You can just trim that off. It slides into place right back there. This one fits in here like so. More likely than not, you'll have to trim away some uh, print material in this little area as it tends to sort of fold over itself with some string in here. 
So to solder our wire on, we're going to go to the back of the pad here. I strip the wire, and I pinch the tip with my pliers a little bit to flatten it out. We don't want it bulging out or tighter, it's not going to fit in its slot. Since we're doing NeoPixel, and the slot for the battery is quite small, we're actually going to insert it, and then wire it through from the top to solder it in. Now, this may be a little tricky, and you're going to want to be careful and patient, so not to melt the chassis anywhere. There we go, that's a good joint. So again, we're just going to crush the tip of the wire with our pliers a little bit, flatten it out, and then we're going to tin it and solder it. Here we go, we have a dab of glue in the center. That'll spread out as we press down. And we're just going to press this into place, making sure our wires line up as needed in their channels. Now to help all of this glue, we're going to grab a battery. And we're just going to put the battery in here, and it'll hold everything in place. Once it's all wired up, your lower section should look like this. Impressive. Most impressive. Before we wire anything in this section, we want to check the fit of this area. It's good to have a snug fit so that the retention screw is more of an accessory than a necessity, but we don't want it to be too tight to fit in. We don't want to break the chassis as we try to slide it. I can fit mine in a little, but it definitely needs me to sand it down to be a good fit. So I'm going to sand this down until it's a nice tight fit, and then we can start wiring this portion up. It is very important to go slow and be patient when working on sanding this part to fit. You can see I broke mine because I was a little impatient with the fit, I broke the chassis, and now I have to order a new one, and that's going to cost money and take time. Once we've ensured our chassis is a good fit in here, we want to install a connector on the inside. Wire up your connector with your battery and speaker leads, and check the sides to make sure they're deburred. Insert the connector into the chassis. You can use the other half of the chassis to press it into place and make sure everything fits well. If it's too big to fit, sand the edges. If it's a loose fit, add a dab of E6000 on the back. Most likely, you'll have to do this as well. As you can see here, our wires are routed through a narrow channel hidden behind the connector. You'll be able to route them through easily once the control box is assembled, but you need to route them so they don't pinch up when the grenade section closes down. As you can see here, the screw is not pinching on any wires. I would recommend using the back screw. On mine, I used the front screw on the control box, but I would really recommend using the back screw. I didn't think that one through. This is going to work fine, but on your build, definitely use the back screw for retention. Next, we're going to wire up the top section here. Now, if you're doing NeoPixel, your connector is going to be a little bit loose, as this is designed mainly for uh, compatibility. It holds the tray pretty well. However, I designed and 3D printed a little uh, adapter piece for a more snug fit on the uh, entire assembly. It's easy enough to design and print if you have a printer handy. If not, glue will suffice as well. We're using the long pin connector, as this is a fairly deep socket. Alright, so once we've got everything done, prepped and routed, you'll probably want to test all your leads to make sure everything's still functioning perfectly. You can use a multimeter and a bench top power supply. From there, it's really up to you to decide how you want to wire things. We've got our OLED on the bottom, we've got our crystal focus on the top, and you can decide where you route the wires and run them through. You can wire the board all along the top, you can try and wire it all on the bottom. I'm probably going to do a little bit of a combination of both for the cleanest and simplest wire routing. I want easy access to the USB and the SD card, but I also want to make sure that it looks clean and functions perfectly. Congratulations! As Vader would say, I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. And constructed it, you have. Don't forget to pop open the soundboard and start configuring away to get those LEDs blinking the way you want, the blade flickering the way you want, and the sounds humming just perfect. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned on upcoming builds. <coughs>